why start YouTube? Especially in a country where I think at the time that it was just crazy, the community was very small, and you were just one of those people who were like, I'm gonna do this thing. Yeah, well, I was inspired by Americans, you know, because in America, YouTubing is like, it's, 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 it's a culture of its own. Every second person has a channel. Every second person has a podcast, you know, like it's, it's like a huge, it's like a thing. It's normal. Everybody has a channel. Everybody knows. So basically, um, when in, in Joburg, I think um, when I started my channel, there were a lot of people. It was a it was at a time where when I started my channel, it was a time where Cedric, um, Cedric, uh, photographer, yeah, and exactly. and Austin also photographers were kind of coming up as photographers and photography was like the vibe in Joburg. Everybody, everybody wanted to take, everybody wanted to be a photographer because of Cedric. You know, Cedric used to, I know he's, he's very huge now, he's popping, yeah. but before, back in the day, Cedric used to walk around with Brahma and just take photos of people. He had a, had a whole thing called Everyday People's Photography. I, don't know I think that that's still his handling Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but but that used to be an actual thing. He used to literally go in the streets for free and just take photos of people who looked nice, portraits and you know, and he became famous from that. Like people would literally want a photo taken by him, you know. So so at that point he inspired a lot of young people to be photographers. All of a sudden these photographers started popping up, also yeah. doing exactly what he does, everyday people's and which is dope. But at the time I was more into video because um as much as I love photography, I just felt like the most visually expressive medium as video or like movies or whatever because yeah. I used to watch a lot of movies so then I used to watch my my roommate Kelly and introduced me to like a vlogger called Casey Neistat from America and then he was just doing like cool stuff with video and he just made it look very easy so I just jumped so then I just decided I'm gonna be a vlogger because there's not much vlogging happening in Joburg and then yeah I started broke niggas with my friends and then at the time people really were like I was more I don't know I think if found it weird, it's just like it's just a bunch of guys. And then yeah, I just caught on eventually. Like after like a year, it took about a year for that show to catch on. Um, and then yeah. And then I just started pushing like the YouTube thing, the YouTube trying to like grow the space in South in, in Joburg, not actually South Africa. South Africa is big but Joburg specifically. Because everybody in Joburg was taking photos, you know, like yeah. and um, everybody in Joburg was like either fashion or photography and and that was like, if you if you say the word influencer, it's always a fashion of photography. And I'm like, but influencer is an influencer. If you, if I start a channel and then and then ten kids start a channel because of my channel, that's influencer. Yeah, yeah. Okay. If you if you start if 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 people watch No Limit podcast and then start their own podcasts, that's influencing. You know, influencing. Sure. Was, it was not just about fashion and photography and for some reason every time we had that conversation it was always fashion and photography so Cedric influenced people to be photographers you know what I mean sure. the same way some South African YouTubers influenced others to start their channels that's they are influencers and, and, and for me as much as I don't consider myself an influencer or consider let's say uh, Sibu an influencer he is influencing people so I think some people are influencers whether they're aware of it or not. But either way it's fine. Like Wasabi, Wasabi is not an influencer. He doesn't walk around saying he's an influencer. And I don't think he thinks he's an influencer, but but whether he likes it or not, he is one. Because he's influenced people to do stuff, you know what I mean? To it's start true. stuff, you know. So it's true. That, that term is very like it's, it's loose. It's very loose. Yeah, yeah. There was actually the recent controversy of brands collaborating with influencers and it seemed like it didn't gel well and people were complaining. Yeah, well, inf well the um, relationship of influencers and brands, um, it, when it comes to traction and, and, um, and results, for example, like for, for, it's, it's not working, it's ineffective. But, um, I, but the reason why I personally respect and support influencers is because they're just like black people who are using themselves as brands to make money. Sure. You know, so I respect the fact that influencers can secure money and create a career out of it. So I'll always like back influencers or anyone who gets who has an influencer job. Because one of my friends is an influencer, uh, Tato Mahaba. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's an influencer. So I can respect that hustle. I can respect influencing as a hustle, 
and I'll always support like black people creating a whole new career out of that because if you told because it's actually a new career for us in this generation there was none of that shit um, 10 years ago you know so um, but when it comes to their effectiveness as in their act like if they do something do people respond it's ineffective you know what I mean because yeah. I've never seen an influencer push a brand and, and, then, and then I say oh actually I wanna I actually wanna buy that yeah the last the last time I saw actual influencing happen in this country, just generally, generally, was with Casper uh, Your Best, where I, I saw kids with ponytails, literally. Yeah. I used to yeah. walk around malls and see kids with ponytails. That's influencing. Because of him. So when it comes to actual, the effect of it, the, the result of it, the, the, nothing really happens, but I respect the hustle of it. But then, yeah. don't you think it's because the brands that are sponsoring our influencers are more like top tier brands mm -hmm. they're not brands that the everyday individual who follows you has access to yeah that's true a lot of them do do for like um higher end brands yeah like yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. some I mean, some like, influencers are sponsored by like maybe whiskey brands and stuff yeah, yeah. when niggas are chilling it's just heineken or black or whatever yeah it's well, not that well yeah well i think like a friend of mine like i said tato he gets yeah. very high end brands but also we can argue that maybe those brands just want more black people to um, to buy that because maybe they have a big white consumer okay. database and maybe they'll use black people to say that, you know, like, um, I think black people would like this as well. Let's, let's see how they feel about it. And, and also, um, yeah, man, I think it's, it's, it's such a complex thing and like, I, sometimes brand alignment is wrong. Sometimes people get influenced by the wrong brands. Like there was a whole huge thing about um, a few years back where influencers were getting Cavellas, um, trying to push the whole Cavella brand, wearing Cavellas, and it backfired because people were saying like, you guys used to diss Ikotani yeah. for wearing Ama Cavella, but now in the north, when you wear Ama Cavella, now we must jump it's on the trend. You know? And a few years ago, you, you guys were the same people making fun of people like us who rock on a caverna, you know? Yeah. And that, that's happening a lot, I've noticed. Like, for example, the, yeah, like, for the real influencer is where the hood, you know, like, for yeah. like us, the people we used to make fun of are the people we, we were in the clothes, you know? Kids used to wear kapa. Now, you know, on the suburbs, yeah. they're wearing kapa. Sure. Uh, Ricky Rick, his whole vibe is from the township. Yeah. His whole vibe. I think him and Okay Manu. No, you see, but Okay Manu wear gas, so he, he, what he's doing, it's actually where he's from. Yeah. He's from, he's from like the townships in Durban, or because I'm Durban, so yeah. what who Okay Manu is is actually who he is, fairly from up from his like upbringing. Private, but, just, but in Ricky's case, for example, um, he's he's referencing the hood. You know what I mean? Because yeah. like a Kulani gas. You know, sure. so um, and 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 these are people we used to make fun of. It's sport, the gold tooth, rings, gold jewelry, spanzula, cavella. We used to make fun of these people, and we used to say people people now in the in the in like commercial spaces and jobs, but in car or car We used to make fun of people. That was that, that yeah. was from the cars, cover or cover the arts, whatever the case is. So so that's real influence, but. The brand, the brands obviously aren't gonna go to a gas and get niggas from the hood to rock this stuff. They're gonna get people who are in closer proximity, you know, who are more, I guess, more groomed to understand those spaces and use them. And it's an injustice to I want to a gas yeah. So it's a very, it's, it's like a very big conversation that I'm still trying to understand. But you know, influencing is is influence. Whether you know what I mean, we need to actually get back to the real definition of it. But, but like I said at the beginning, the hustle of it is something I respect. So if you're black and you're an influencer and you're making money, I will 100% respect and support, and support that hustle. Yeah. But if we are being honest about the actual results of that influencing, the results are non-existent.